around them. I just thought it'd be interesting just to sort of um, give a bit of background to that. Um, what's going on on the estate? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. A bit louder. Okay, try my best. So, um, I'm a researcher from the University of Leeds and a few years ago I um, started a research project which was looking at all of these PFI schemes, these regeneration schemes that are privately financed in housing in the UK. And a few months into my research I got an email from someone from the estate called Jean, who's here today, and she wanted to basically express interest in like learning more about these PFI schemes, which is great because I wanted to also find out what was happening um, on the Mansfield North Estate. So we got together and we started talking and I spent quite a lot of time talking with the Tenants Association as they started to form what became the official Mansfield North Residents Association and Monitoring Board. And I found out a lot about um, the reality, the harsh reality, the, the kind of violence of regeneration just following um, their experiences over two and a half years. And the backdrop to it is that Mansfield North a state like many estates all over the country had been on the receiving end of say 20 years of a lack of investment, a lack of maintenance, a kind of uh, a local authority that had gradually disappeared, um, all because government policy had changed uh, radically against public housing and social housing and was gradually trying to privatise it and flog it and get, get rid of it all. However, under the new Labour government in the 1997, they launched a, a kind of a new regeneration scheme which was going to be financed by this thing called PFI, which is the Private Finance Initiative. And it's a, it's a, it's a scheme in which the local authority and the state uh, put money in and pay private companies to come in, take over the estate, knock down bits of it, refurbish bits of it, build new bits of it. And for 20 years or 30 years, they will then manage that estate. And it's supposed to be... Um, perfect. It's supposed to be value for money, it's supposed to be an amazing uh, regeneration experience because these private companies, they really know what they're doing. Uh, they've got a really good long track record in uh, housing management and you know, private landlordism obviously had a good reputation going back to the 19th century. So they, they're brought in and they're, they're not just management companies and building companies, they're also big banks, multinational banks, and they are all part of the financing of this regeneration scheme. It's, it's a scheme that is extremely expensive because it's done all privately. So um, tenants' rent, service charges, local authority, budgets, and also government subsidies and taxes go into financing a scheme which would have cost probably twice as less if it had been done the normal way, maybe even three times. And a lot of the money never really kind of comes into the estate because if you like, it's a kind of the money... It's supposed to be coming in, but because the companies are, aren't really being monitored by, by the local authority anymore, because the local authority is also um, kind of contracted out the, the very monitoring of its own contract to the people that are actually doing the contract. So you get these private companies who, who go around and say, yes, this kitchen's finished, this bathroom's finished, it's all looking very good. Cha-ching. And in reality, a lot of this work wasn't done very well, and the, the, since 2012... The first few weeks or months of the contract, there was all kinds of problems starting on any aspect of that regeneration scheme. There were problems. There were problems on, with health and safety. There were problems with floods, with leaks, with the electric works, which were not done, being done properly. And then there was the whole issue of like customer relations and how tenants and leaseholders and, and homeowners were being treated by the private company. So I was kind of documenting this with the Residents Association. And... Another part of the story is that people have had to move home. Um, about 58 homeowners, their homes are being knocked down, they would have to move home, and they were promised that they would be able to move into a like-for-like -like property. And at some point, they were promised a property swap. All you need to do is swap your lease to a, to a lease that we've got for you, move into your new home, and everything will be fine. Unfortunately, when they could put this contract together, they didn't really work out that a lot of people had mortgages. And the very banks that caused the financial crisis were also now being kind of very risk averse. They didn't want to be lending to anyone that they didn't see being able to pay their mortgage back. So when they tried to transfer the mortgages over from the old lease to the new lease, they treated the homeowners on the estate like brand new 
homeowners trying to buy, get a mortgage and buy a house. They didn't treat them as someone just swapping them over. Many banks would not lend, wouldn't, wouldn't remortgage, wouldn't swap. And so you had at one point about 20 homeowners who could not move into their home, which they'd been promised. Many left, many sold up um, under a lot of pressure from the company that was running the estate to move and who was offering them very low sums of money to move. Um, this is all part of the hidden story of what's been going on on the estate. There's other, loads of other hidden stories, but I don't, because of the heat and because of the film itself, I won't go into any more detail. But what I understand in the last four years is this has been a kind of orchestrated, almost like theft of many things, of land, the private company that has built all the private housing, over 500 new units. They got that land for free. That land was valued at at least £8 million, and it was supposed to be paid to the local authority. In 2011, the, the, the coalition government cut £16.8 million pounds out of the contract in terms of public subsidy, and that was just simply devolved down to the people on the estate in terms of what they would get. So they got £16.8 million pounds less of the contract. And one of the things that was therefore had to be given away was the land for the developers to build the private housing, which is currently selling at upwards of £600,000, £700,000 for a two-bed or three-bed flat. The homeowners who got displaced and moved out, they didn't get, they didn't get 700,000 pounds, they didn't get 600, they didn't get 500, they didn't get 400, they didn't get 300. Most of them got somewhere between 100 and 260,000 pounds to go. Basically, that regeneration scheme, the PFI, has unlocked something like 300,000 pounds, 400,000 pounds in pure profit uh, for those developers. One day, Lambeth will get some of that money back. And... Um, obviously everyone's waiting with bated breath to see how much they're going to get back. They also recently have, have found out that they have fined Regenta £240,000 over the last four years. £240,000 as compensation to the local authority from the PFI contractor for poor performance and standards of service. I, I wonder how many residents have received a penny or a pound of the £240,000, which is your poor experience, your poor standards, your poor maintenance, I would imagine very little. There's also the situation with the E.ON energy monopoly on the estate, that E.ON has got a 40-year energy monopoly contract to provide a monopoly of hot water and heating to people on the estate, and the price of that hot water and heating is high. Uh, if the billing system works, it usually puts a high bill down and people have been really, really struggling with bills and have been so afraid of their bills that they turn their heat in and hot water off. So this film is about a part of this story. It's about the kind of human experience of what's going on as people being moved around. Uh, but I, I really advise those of you who don't know about the Maxfield North Regeneration Scheme to check out um, articles that have been written, newspaper stories. And also Keith Cooper from Inside Housing has also written an article about the E.ON uh, energy monopoly and what's been going on there. So it's all available. You can all find it on the internet. And I think I'll I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.